Welcome to the program. Tonight I'm joined by Frank DeBillo, here to talk about Space Florida. He had this to say. There were many people who believed that with the retirement of the shuttle, the space program in Florida was dead. Right. And there, nothing is farther from the truth. Uh, the spaceport today is uh, committed to 33 launches this year. Elon Musk, who's the founder of SpaceX, mm -hmm. right. is planning on doing close to 50 launches a year by himself. That's fabulous. When Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin starts mm -hmm. to fly, he's looking at flying at least once, perhaps twice a week. Now we're up to perhaps somewhere between 100 and 200 launches. And if I add United Launch Alliance and Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. on top of that, we should see more than one launch a week, perhaps two launches a week before oh, long out fun. of Florida. And I predict a very robust space program for Florida. Frank DeBillo and Space Florida when we return. Funding for your career is provided by Rockwell Collins. Additional funding provided by From Florida's Space Coast, this is your career. Welcome to Your Career. I'm Debbie Featherston, your host, and with me is Frank DeBillo, CEO and President of Space Florida. Frank, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Debbie, and I am looking forward to this. Well, I am too, and I'd love if you could start off by just telling the viewers a little more about Space Florida and its role in the advancement of our space program. Well, Space Florida is a construct of the legislature. We were created by the legislature to help grow the aerospace industry in the state and to serve as the state's agent for the development of the space industry as well. We serve two roles, really. Uh, we're an economic development support organization for aerospace growth, and then we are also the state's spaceport authority. Uh, and that's a statewide role, really? not just here at the Cape. Um, so in the role of uh, Spaceport Authority, we have a lot of special tools uh, that go with uh, our ability to finance infrastructure, and we apply those to aerospace growth uh, throughout the state. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, I think the average person, when they think about the space program, you know, they often are thinking about NASA's manned space program. Mm -hmm. But there's many other aspects that make up today's space program. Would you inform us? Well, I, I'd be delighted to. The, uh, the space industry globally is about $340 billion, and over 75% of that is from commercial companies, not governments. Mm. I think uh, in the last 50, 60 years, the space activity that we knew was largely federal, whether it was here in the U.S. or in Russia or China or the other nations that are uh, uh, conducting space research or space activity. But increasingly and inevitably, this is an industry that's become more commercial. And uh, I expect that uh, we'll see uh, every, every few years uh, major new applications of space technology to our everyday lives. The bulk of the industry is, are people who have taken space assets, satellites, and other things, mm -hmm. and are applying them in some form to benefit our life here on Earth, whether it's in remote sensing, helping us monitor the environment, or uh, search for uh, minerals, or assisting agriculture, or whether it's in telecommunications, providing uh, internet service mm -hmm. globally, or uh, images from global, uh, Google Earth and programs like that. Mm -hmm. So while there is a civil agency program to explore space like NASA and a national security element to defend us uh, using satellites and, and uh, the, the missile programs that we've had. Right. The majority of space activity is really commercial benefiting everyday lives. Hmm. Tell us a little bit more about those commercial, some of those commercial um, entities and some of the work that they're doing today. Well. For the most part, uh, commercial companies are taking advantage of some of the attributes of space. Uh, the biggest one is that it's high up. Mm -hmm. So when you put a satellite high up, it serves as a cell tower 
or as an observation platform okay. and allows companies to uh, take very precise photographs of the earth or to monitor uh, chemical characteristics or look at radiated light. And these get infused into value-added information products. So while we think of space companies as being up there, the majority of them are down here taking data from space and making it valuable for our everyday use. In many ways, space is pervasive in our homes, in our cars, uh, in our road systems, in transportation. The global positioning system is a perfect example. Right, GPS, right. It's helping us track and navigate precisely. The map systems that we have on our phones and mm -hmm. in our car are an example of an application of space technology. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I mean, it really is a cool industry to work in because there are so many facets yeah. to it uh, and so many uh, what I call adjacent careers. Not everybody's a rocket scientist, but we can all also we can always be uh, related to the industry if we're taking space data or images and making it useful here on Earth. Yeah, absolutely. When we look at the space, you, all the things you're describing, here we're investing, right? We've invested big dollars in space, and yet look at the benefit to how it's enhanced our individual lives. Well, there's no question that uh, even now uh, companies and countries that invest in space mm -hmm. are doing so because uh, by pushing to do things difficult, and the space is a harsh environment, but whenever a nation invests in space to push and advance technologies, they're creating a culture of innovation mm -hmm. here on Earth that really does permeate every facet of their society. That's why we're seeing today that uh, well over 39 countries are looking to invest in space, are developing some kind of a space program activity. There are over 39 spaceports either existing or planned, wow. which is an indication of the number of countries that want to have an active uh, program in space. And I imagine that we're going to see some partnerships, as we have seen through even the, the um, during the shuttle years, where there was collaboration between, what was it, uh, Japan and several other countries, and, you know, just getting, right, you pull this together and I'll pull it, you know, so joint effort to... I think that's one of the exciting things about the future of the space program, especially the the civil space program, yeah. the, that which we've known as NASA's program. Right. NASA is charged uh, with developing the capability for the nation to explore space. Mm -hmm. And so they're focused very much on deep space exploration. And the equipment and technologies required to do that are, are complex and yeah. difficult to mm -hmm. advance and expensive, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this will be done through partnership with other nations, yeah. uh, and it actually benefits other nations to work in partnership and may contribute to collaboration in so many other mm -hmm. areas, so it's mm -hmm. to our well-being to, to be able to pursue those things. Sounds like it makes a lot of sense. It does. You know, a lot of good sense. Well, tell us uh, from your perspective and what, you, what you're able to tell us, um, what does the future of the U.S. space program look like? Well, I think that uh, both in the last administration and certainly what I hear coming out of uh, the, the present administration, there is going to be a focus on, on trying to drive NASA to deep space exploration and to turn over those things which we've been doing in low mm -hmm. Earth orbit and even around the moon to commercial companies. As NASA looks to deep space exploration, Mars and beyond, yeah. They're going to have to develop the technologies in propulsion to get there faster, in life support systems to keep our astronauts alive during these very long trips. Some of the approaches to reaching Mars and beyond have involved uh, the development of what they call a cislunar staging area. Mm. And so NASA may focus on getting to the moon and with industry partners uh, building a, a platform as a staging area, something that's orbiting. Yeah. the moon. Commercial companies may actually go to the surface of the moon and begin to um, develop habitats and rovers and, and to even exploit the technology or the materials that are uh, lunar-based, um, bring some of those back to Earth. I know there'll be a lot of activity in low Earth orbit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. close to Earth, uh, for doing research because you can take advantage of 
I mentioned the attribute of high upness. Right. But there's also the attributes of high radiation environment or a vacuum mm. uh, or zero gravity. Mm -hmm. And all of these can enable new kinds of research and exploration into uh, new materials, new technologies, medical advances. Uh, Boy, I tell you, just hearing all of that and, and, and having read some about some of this for several years, I keep thinking, gosh, if I had my career to start all over again, maybe I'd have chosen a different profession. Because <laughs> some of what we're, where we're going, I think, is so fascinating. Well, it's fascinating, and it, it, it's also very interesting to think that the people who will be going to Mars, because I expect 20 years out, yeah. or 10 years out, we'll be going to Mars in an unmanned fashion mm. to study, to mm -hmm. uh, exploit, to land on Mars, and to uh, do a lot of the prep work for manned exploration. 20 years out, I expect to see manned exploration, and that tells you that wow. the, the kids that will be astronauts going to Mars are in young high school and grade school today. Yeah. So it is important to catch them early. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. I got into the space program uh, years ago because as a kid I was interested in how you could doodle and draw an airplane and then how does one make something out of metal that flies from that drawing and right. the whole art of aerospace engineering was fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Space, I don't know a youngster that doesn't get turned on by space and rocket ships and right. things that are uh, truly uh, out there. I was going to say, uh, out of this world. <laughs> and, and we want to capture that interest right. early in trying to get right. them involved in the sciences. Oh, I, that's, a, that's a great point. What are some of the ideas that you have about, about how we could better do that? I know some of the schools have had, you know, initiatives around the STEM program or do have programs around STEM. What, what can we do there? Well, I think there's a number of things that, that we can do. We have to take an active role, and industry has to become uh, an increasing uh, increasingly involved partner mm -hmm. in working with our academic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. institutions to uh, through robotics programs, through mm -hmm. simulation and modeling and gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, kids are into gaming. We Definitely. should take advantage of that. There are ways to teach science at every level and get kids involved in, in science. Science is a process of discovery. Kids have an inquisitive mind. It's not about understanding formulas or rattling things from memory. It's about learning to solve problems, and kids love yeah. puzzles. I think we need a more active collaboration with the schools to get kids involved earlier right. in understanding right. what's going on around us and to observe mm -hmm. things in, in mm -hmm. the biological world, in the chemical world, in the physical world around us. Yeah, I, I think you have a great point. I have a friend who is a, des a senior design engineer, and he has been with a concentration in radio frequency. Mm -hmm. He's been involved in radio since he was about 10 years old. That's the time to, you to, know? Get, to get youngsters involved yeah. in things. Yeah. Just being able to communicate with other people in different parts of the world using what were ham radios years ago. Right. That does get your, your interest going. How yeah. does it all work? Yeah. And we still have ham radios today. <laughs> we do. <laughs> oh. A lot well, of hams operating radios today. Uh, that's right. I was going to say so. And I might be one of them. But um, how will this impact Florida? You know, the, we're just talking about the U.S. space program. How will it impact Florida? Well, I have always believed that, that Florida, and we've set some goals for Florida, both in aerospace and space. But I want Florida to be the gateway mm -hmm. to the stars. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of uh, nations may aspire to that, but we have always been the embarkation point for manned flights, certainly to the moon and to the space station. But I see uh, the Cape Canaveral spaceport as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way that I looked at London uh, centuries ago, yeah. it was the port that opened up trade and commerce in Europe right. and uh, was a gateway for uh, all kinds of economic growth mm -hmm. for its industry. I see Florida as the global leader in enabling space commerce. And that's the, what I'd like to work to position Florida to become. Mm -hmm. That's a goal that we set. We laid out a plan for not only the evolution of our space activity, but the growth of the spaceport to accommodate commercial customers yeah. uh, to make that happen. Now, that's fascinating, and, and I would be right there doing whatever I could to help you achieve that goal. Well, you are actually you know. through, through a program like this because the foundation for whatever we aspire mm -hmm. to in space and in aerospace is the young workforce.
So anytime yeah. we can help them understand how mm -hmm. their careers uh, can be connected to uh, right. uh, such an interesting uh, program yeah. is, is yeah. a good thing. Yeah, and I think you're right, you know, the earlier we can help those children discover their passion, you know, really tap that curiosity and keep them excited and inspired about space and different aspects of space. Uh, I've got a grand grandson that really loves robotics mm -hmm. and I could see him really involved in the future of, of the space program. So. Another one's is crazy about gaming, and he's creating his own game. I mean, all these are just... And they are all great tools yeah. for solving problems. And uh, I think one of the uh, most interesting programs on television is Crime Scene Investigation. And there's a young female star who plays a scientist role in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. But she makes science cool. And she does. Because she's using science to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And kids relate to that. Yes, they do. And they love puzzles. They love yeah. the ways to... Uh, yeah. To take things apart and understand mm -hmm, how they mm -hmm. work. Tap into that imagination and curiosity. That's great. So, you know, we while we're still talking about the U.S. space program, I'm just kind of curious a little bit about um, some reports that came out a couple months ago that we were supposed to be seeing, We are, and I think we have been seeing, more launches out of Kennedy Space Center. So what do you know about that? Well, Can you tell uh, us? I'm very proud of the fact that today, uh, and I'm going back seven years uh, because the, there were many people who believed that with the retirement of the shuttle, the space program in Florida was dead. Right. And there, nothing is farther from the truth. Uh, back seven years ago, we had just come off a period of time in which federal government was the primary uh, enabler for space, both mm -hmm. in the military side and in NASA's world. Um, and with the retirement of the shuttle, there was an economic hit and a workforce hit mm -hmm. to this area. Mm -hmm. But we set a goal to diversify the program so that today we're no longer just launching stuff. We are building the rockets that we launch. We're building satellites. We're about to build the most advanced satellite manufacturing facility right out at Exploration Park. And we're attracting all kinds of other businesses that want to be close to and provide supply chain for these major mm -hmm. companies doing these great things. The spaceport today is uh, committed to 33 launches this year. Elon Musk, who's the founder of SpaceX, mm -hmm. right. is planning on doing close to 50 launches a year by himself. That's fabulous. When Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin starts mm -hmm. to fly, he's looking at flying at least once, perhaps twice a week. Now we're up to perhaps somewhere between 100 and 200 launches. And if I add United Launch Alliance and Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. on top of that, we should see more than one launch a week, perhaps two launches a week, before oh, land out fun. of Florida. And I predict a very robust space program for Florida. Well, that's fantastic. That's really encouraging and exciting because there's still so many people who are here that have a real passion for the space program and and can help to maybe be a part of some of that workforce. And then, like you say, we got to keep building our future workforce. It's it's also good for tourism and the economy. Yes, yes it uh, is. With every launch, there are a lot of people who uh, are excited by not only seeing the launch, but we're trying to make it more participative mm -hmm. so that they can come to Florida and they can make it part of their, their trip here to right. not only experience the launch, but to perhaps engage in some of the learning experiences mm -hmm. that we can create. Mm -hmm. I think the Visitor Center does a very nice job with they some do. of that as well, too, don't they? You know, um, you've mentioned some of the new players in the commercial side, which is really great to hear that we've got so much development and that the space program isn't dead, that it's just a, it's evolving as it's needed to. And I understand that uh, President Trump recently signed the NASA Transition Act, and I don't have the precise name, but tell us a little bit about that and how that's going to impact the work that you do. Well, it's a, uh, I think it was $600 million over what President Obama's request for okay. Na uh, NASA was. Uh, it's a $19.1 billion uh, budget for NASA. Mm -hmm. But it extends out over a short period of time. The bill to follow that is going to be for a much longer Horizon, Good. so I'm told, uh, and I believe that in a few months, uh, maybe a few weeks, we don't exactly know what the White House is 
planning, but they believe that uh, space will be an integral part of the Make America Great campaign again. So they're Good. planning a pretty big space activity, a space mm -hmm. announcement of not only a mission for NASA that gives them a focus on Mars and beyond, mm -hmm. and I stress mm -hmm. the and beyond, mm -hmm. but also talks about partnership with industry and partnership with other nations. And so I think you'll see a lot of uh, lunar activity that may be commercially supported, this CIS lunar base. Uh, you'll see uh, exploitation missions mm -hmm. to the surface of Mars. Uh, I think that uh, in the next 10 years, you'll see a number of trips to Mars that are unmanned, and then 20 years, a number of manned trips. And in the meantime, we'll be developing a lot of the technologies required to do that. And yeah. this is very exciting. Uh, for one, me and for everyone. Uh, absolutely, and one thing that you said that really uh, got my attention was the fact that perhaps in this next budget, it'll be for a longer period of time, because I think that's been one of the biggest problems that the space program's had, is that the budget is always dependent on each administration coming in, and I, I don't know how long they're looking at, but I would love to see a window of 10 years or something that goes way beyond an administration in terms of funding so instead of stopping and starting and stopping and starting some of these programs, I mean, it seems like we've invested lots and lots of money and then new administration comes in and pulls the plug. I don't see um, uh, a, a change in the way that Congress authorizes and appropriates, but I think that the planning uh, that supports okay. the authorization process okay. will clearly be much longer range and that is what the administration is hoping to accomplish. Good. Good. Well, thank you for that clarification, because I was getting all excited that maybe... Oh, listen, I would be excited, too, <laughs> to see us finally doing business in the same way. That's right. I, I just think, it, you know, when you think about it as an industry, you know, and looking at the foundational work that it does, that, that the U.S. space program does, it makes sense to give it a longer tenure. It, it needs consistency and certainty yes. with respect to what the budget yes. plan is, and that's what I'm hoping they can yeah. begin, to, to, begin yeah. to tackle. Absolutely. So the, when we talk about, let's go back and talk a little bit more about some of the, the well, let me ask you a question that's kind of been uh, percolate, percolating in the back of my mind. Uh, you know, when there, there was a lot of work that I'm sure Space Florida went through when there was with the retirement of the shuttle. Right, and so there was this shift from more government to more commercial. How has that influenced what you've done and the role that Space Florida you know, has today? I'm well, sure there were some challenges that you experienced well, in that really, transition. There really were. The, the first challenge and the major one was that uh, with the retirement of the shuttle, we lost some 9,135 jobs yeah. in the area. And that has an impact on schools, mm -hmm. on families, on the secondary businesses mm -hmm. that support the industry. And I realized that uh, about a third of the workforce was going to retire because they had stayed with the program. Yeah. So part of the challenge was to fill in with some new companies uh, that could take up a lot of the workforce before we lost yeah. them to other states. Yeah. And we've largely been successful in bringing in fairly quickly uh, a, a sufficient mm -hmm. uh, new company base to keep a lot of that workforce and to bring in a lot of new hires mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. In the more recent years, uh, we've broadened the industry, so our goal was to broaden the space industry beyond just launch and to, to deepen the supply chain yeah. because the supply chain is filled with local companies that are making materials and parts and supplying the people that are actually building mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. building uh, the spacecraft that we, we fly. And that's had a big impact on the area because we are now uh, growing a broad-based supply chain in the state. For the past several years, Florida was number one in aerospace attractiveness. So it's been our goal to keep it there and to actually have the state over a 10-year period become the number one aerospace state in the state, in the country. Yeah, yeah. We have about five minutes left, and you've answered a lot of questions that were on my mind about, you know, uh, man flight and timeline for all of that. What do you see as the real in the future for the state of Florida. You were talking about the goals that you have, but is there anything you can tell us a little bit more in terms of your vision for Florida or the impact on Florida as it relates to space? We're going to be focused, Debbie, on trying to build, a, uh, and I'll use the word ecosystem, for aerospace in Florida. And that includes everything from 
uh, building on the work that the legislature and the governor have done to create a uh, business regulatory and permitting environment that's mm -hmm. very friendly to aerospace, to the tax uh, environment, both at state level and local community level, mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, academic and, and educational foundation that produces the workforce, the uh, quality of life, uh, and the communities which are at the heart of supplying that workforce and keeping it going. But we want to address the entire mm. ecosystem, a key part of which is the transportation, roads, bridges, rail, right. and all the other things, including the port and spaceport that support the growth of the industry. So as we look at planning all of those out, we want to anticipate an environment where at the spaceport alone we're doing somewhere between 150 and 200 launches a year. That there's different kinds of activity with mm -hmm. people going up into space from Florida and doing research yeah. or perhaps even 10 years out and going on vacation destinations up there. There certainly will be companies like Virgin Galactic mm -hmm. uh, operating, we hope, out of Florida. There's not a commitment yet to do that, but there'll be multiple companies flying passengers to space as part of a Florida vacation or a Florida mm. adventure. And yeah. so I see a lot of that kind of activity. The biggest area, though, I think is as we continue to put more and more satellites up into space, and those satellites are interconnected with airplanes flying, at any point in time we have 7,000 airplanes over the U.S. and 14,000 worldwide all carrying yeah. sensors connected with things on the ground in mm -hmm. our pockets. Mm -hmm. the, they're all producing a huge amount of data and they're gonna be thousands of companies that are starting up, helping us create algorithms and apps to make use of uh, decisions uh, that help our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And I wanna see a lot of those companies here in Florida. Yeah, I, I think I have the coolest job in the state, but- I'd say you do. <laughs> but uh, my, my real passion is in getting young people excited about science, excited yeah. about space. And uh, space by itself does get their interest, but we need to figure out how to get them active and involved, whether it's through a robotics program mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. a gaming initiative or creating uh, aerospace and space academies in our schools. Boy, well, that would be getting great. Them playing space games, something that helps them along a career path yeah. that uh, is, is good for the country overall. They don't have to work in space because they can work in medicine or right. do or work in all kinds of areas that apply that technology yeah. to our Yeah, all contributes life. to that. Yes. Will, Frank, thank you so much for being my guest. And on behalf of my guest and everyone here on the set of Your Career, thank you for watching, and remember, be career happy. More information about this program is available online at millermediagroup.org. Funding for Your Career is provided by Rockwell Collins. Additional funding provided by